Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an absolute must for those who wish to learn and then create. By now, you have probably heard about them due to their popularity, and for good reason. Yet, if you haven't, let me tell you a bit about their wide range of services that will surely pique everyone's interest. We as humans love learning new things and putting them to work, whether that be for an actual job or just for a hobby. With Skillshare, you will have access to thousands of different courses ranging from photography, web development, animation, and creative writing. I myself have used Skillshare before when I started my channel by learning about Premiere Pro Basics that was taught in about 20 minutes by awarded filmmaker Benjamin Ortega. After learning what he offered in his video, I was much more confident when editing videos. With Skillshare, you get the luxury of learning from the privacy of your own home and at your own pace. Another good thing is that you will find no distracting ads in any of the videos. So, whether you are just starting out and wanting to learn something new, or already have years of experience and just want to sharpen your skills even further, then Skillshare is an amazing tool to add to your expanding arsenal. And as an added bonus, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, so you can explore your creativity. So head on over to Skillshare after this video and find what fascinates you. On March 14, 1998, as the sun rose over Cheyenne, Oklahoma, a man by the name of Lenny Derrickson was having breakfast with his son Jared like any other morning for the father and son. Shortly after, Lenny would leave with a man who wanted to purchase one of Lenny's horses. Fast forward more than 20 years later, and Lenny remains missing to this day, with hardly any leads forming in the aftermath of his fateful trip with the mystery man. What followed would become one of Oklahoma's biggest missing person cases in history. This is the true story of the disappearance of Lenny Derrickson. As Lenny and his 16-year-old son Jared ate their breakfast during the morning of March 14, 1998, things seemed normal, such as they had every other morning. As the two sat and talked, a white pickup truck pulled into the driveway and stopped in front of the house. Lenny made his way outside to greet the man stepping out of the truck. Jared watched on from the kitchen window as he cleaned the dishes. He would later say that his father didn't seem nervous or bothered by the man being there. They appeared to be talking as if they were friends, but Jared had never met this man, nor ever seen him or his truck. As the two seemed to wrap up talking, Lenny made his way back inside and told Jared that the man was there wanting to purchase one of Lenny's horses that he had for sale. He also told Jared that they were going to Elk City, Oklahoma, and then to Mobiti, Texas, so that the man could look at the horses. He told Jared to start his daily chores and that he should be back around noon. Jared told his father goodbye, and as Lenny and the mysterious man got into the truck and pulled out of the driveway, little to Jared's knowledge at the time, it would be the last time he ever saw his father. As the day turned into evening and still no sign of his father, a worried Jared waited up for as long as he could, but eventually he went to sleep. By the next morning, there was still no sign of his father, and that was when Jared informed several family members of the situation. By that afternoon, with still no sign of Lenny, the family contacted the police and an investigation soon followed. Once police arrived at the home, they began a thorough search of Lenny's belongings, seeing if there was anything there that could point to where he could be. They also called several hospitals in the area to see if Lenny had been admitted, but none had anyone by that name or his description. Upon further investigating, they discovered Lenny's uncashed paycheck, and as for anything else that could be seen as suspicious, police came up short as everything else seemed to be completely normal. 
When interviewing Jared, he told police that the conversation he witnessed between his father and the stranger didn't appear threatening or hostile in any way. He even said that his father didn't appear bothered or distressed when coming back into the house and informing him of the potential sale. Jared described the mystery man as being Caucasian, in his early 40s having a full reddish beard, around 6 feet tall and 200 pounds. He also said that the man was wearing a hat that said no fear on the front of it, and that he may have had a New Mexico license plate. Other than that, there was seemingly nothing more investigators could find at the house. As the search continued, police did catch a break when a waitress came forward telling them that she saw Lenny and the same man eating at the diner she worked at the same day Lenny was last seen. She claimed that the strange man was doing most of the talking and was eating as well. Lenny was said to have just had a coffee and seemed to be just listening to the man. The waitress also said that the conversation didn't appear to be out of the normal, just two friends having breakfast and talking. The description that the waitress gave to police matched with the one Jared gave, even down to the same hat the man was wearing. When police went to investigate the location of Lenny's horses, they discovered that neither Lenny or this mysterious man ever arrived. What came out later that was even stranger was that Lenny never even put out an ad for any horse that he was selling. Not that it wasn't for sale, but how would this man have even known where Lenny lived? For Jared not to recognize the man, then he clearly had never seen him before. But for Lenny to seemingly be so comfortable with him, at the very least, the two men knew of each other. And that could be simply that Lenny knew him from work or just from his past. While Lenny never put out an ad, it could have just been word of mouth that got around. Yet, what strikes me as a little odd here is why he would even meet Lenny at his house instead of at the property where the horses were. And another thing is that Jared never described the man having a trailer attached to his truck. So I would think, and I could be wrong here, but if you're going with the possibility of buying a horse, then you would obviously need something to transport it in. That however, could be why they needed to make a stop before going to the location of the actual horses. After the first week of his disappearance, any lead to Lenny's whereabouts quickly dissolved. They honestly didn't have much to work with from the start. A sighting of Lenny and the man at the diner, knowing that the pair never went to the property where the horses were at, and Jared's recounting of that morning was truly all they had. The investigation didn't stop, but for the next few months, it would stay in this state of limbo until six months later. Half a year after Lenny Derrickson was last seen, a phone call was made to the police by someone claiming that they had both seen and talked to Lenny. He said it was at a bar in Amarillo, Texas. He gave a description of Lenny and it seemed very accurate to both his physical description and personality. The man, however, refused to give his name and wanted to remain anonymous. When police arrived at the bar in question, the man was no longer there. However, they did interview the bartender who had been working the night prior and backed up what the caller was saying. Yet, the bartender was only agreeing that the man who made the call was at that bar, assuming that he had told her he saw Lenny Derrickson who had been missing for months. But the bartender never said that they personally saw Lenny themselves. So either this man was telling the truth and was potentially at a different bar when he saw Lenny, or the bartender simply didn't notice Lenny at all. Six months had passed, mind you. Plenty of time for Lenny to alter his appearance if he wanted to. But then again, the description that the unknown man gave to police was said to have been very similar to Lenny. So then, Lenny may not have changed his appearance at all. Following this, there have been no updates surrounding the disappearance of Lenny Derrickson. In the 20 plus years that have passed, no confirmed sighting, contact, or anything has come up. A body has never been found, no foul play of any kind could be discovered, and it simply seems that Lenny Derrickson vanished into thin air. 
and with what seemingly is unavoidable when a mystery can't be solved, theories on the case came in droves, and this one was no different. The theories on the case of Lenny Derrickson seem to boil down to two versions of events. The first one is the man who was interested in buying one of Lenny's horses or was responsible for his disappearance. There are a lot of people out there who feel that the mystery man killed Lenny and went to great lengths to dispose of his body. And clearly, he succeeded, since it's been over 20 years and Lenny's body has never been found. And on top of that, nobody has ever been able to properly identify the man that was seen with Lenny. A big reason as to why people think that this could be true is that Lenny had recently went through a very ugly divorce. I wasn't able to find the full details on the case, but the little that I was able to find states that after it was all said and done, Lenny was almost crippled financially. His son Jared was 16 at the time of Lenny's disappearance, and it can be assumed that he was willingly living with Lenny due to having a bad relationship with his mother. It was said that the divorce really severed the family and that Lenny's daughter, Connie, went with her mother, Kathy, while Jared lived with Lenny. Another thing that has to be mentioned is the farm itself. I found that the farm Lenny owned went under in December of 1997 due to the price of dairy. The fallout was so bad that Lenny was drowning in debt, a fact that was only discovered after his disappearance. How this relates to him possibly being murdered was due to both the divorce and the failing business. If the divorce itself was bad enough, then obviously a lot of bad blood started to build. Add on top of that with the failing business side of it, and it could have been that someone felt so much anger out of it that killing Lenny was a form of payback. It could also possibly have a financial gain to it. If he were to go missing, then perhaps a payout of what was left could go to someone. While I can somewhat understand the process there, at the same time, I don't. I do not see how killing Lenny would have any possible monetary gain. He had already gone through the divorce, and assuming he even had life insurance, then I doubt it would even go to his ex. On top of that, if his death was due to potential financial gain from what was left after selling the business, it still seems unlikely, as I can't imagine it would be a life-changing amount of money, if it was later discovered that Lenny himself was drowning in debt. So the killer for hire theory, to me at least, doesn't seem to hold much weight here. Sure, it is odd that this apparent strange man knew exactly where Lenny lived and that he had a horse for sale even though Lenny himself hadn't advertised it. But again, that could simply have come from word of mouth. If I am trying to see it from every side though, it could be that this mystery man was informed by a third party of the horse Lenny had for sale and used this as a cover to not arouse suspicion from Lenny. Going there with the intention of buying a horse could have at the time seemed like a great idea to Lenny, since he obviously needed the money. I myself have never owned a horse, but I can't imagine the cost of upkeep is quite expensive. So if it was in fact a killer for hire, then sure, the motive could possibly be there, but I think it was more on the side of revenge rather than monetary gain. Another theory is that Lenny willingly disappeared and had actually planned the entire thing. The first sign of this is going back to both the divorce and the failing business. With it being known that the divorce was very ugly, the business was going under, and Lenny was drowning in debt, then that could be motive for someone to want to simply start over. There, after all, has never been a body found, there has never been another sighting of Lenny, and when taking into account the phone call from the man six months after Lenny's disappearance, then it at the very least is enough to speculate that Lenny could very well have just wanted to start over with a new life. He could have felt that due to his business dying, then he had nothing left to hand down to his children, and with Jared living with him, perhaps the constant daily struggle of providing became too much for him and figured that Jared would simply be better off. 
I haven't come across anything that stood out as obvious that Lenny was planning this, except for one thing. And this is purely speculation on my part, but the uncashed paycheck may have been intentionally left behind for two reasons. One, it was left for Jared actually, so he would at the very least have some money to rely on. Granted, since it was Lenny's check, I am not sure how Jared would have even cashed it, but it could have been left behind as Lenny not leaving his son empty-handed. Or two, it was known that Lenny would never be coming back and taking the chance to cash his check could have been too much of a breadcrumb trail that police could have followed. He may have simply left it there so he wouldn't have any traces of where he went or where he had been. It would also explain why since his disappearance, his credit cards have never been used, his bank account hasn't been touched, and no checks were ever made in his name. I know that many will argue that he wouldn't have just willingly left his family behind, but perhaps he was doing that just so Jared could have a better life and not follow in his footsteps of attempting to salvage the dairy business. To be honest, I don't think it really is that hard for someone to disappear if they really even want to. If Lenny knew that he was never coming back, then him simply using the cover of a man wanting to buy a horse would be a good strategy to use. It would, as it did, cause police to look elsewhere while Lenny was going in a different direction. Jared also stated that he thought the truck that the man was driving had New Mexico plates. It could be that Lenny himself was taken to Mexico to start over. If he was a farmer, then he no doubt would be used to the terrain and lifestyle in Mexico. Honestly, when reading all of this about him and the idea of him willingly disappearing, I got a lot of vibes from Breaking Bad and El Camino. Those of you who have watched it will know what I am talking about, but maybe the mystery man was a transporter of sorts. Maybe he was hired by Lenny to be relocated to start a new life, where nobody knew him or would ever find him. Another theory that technically goes into this theory is that Lenny and the mystery man were actually lovers and that they planned to escape to start a new life together. There wasn't much in the way of proving that this was real, but what strikes me as interesting was that there were a lot of people thinking the same thing, that it could have been the cause of Lenny's divorce. I am in no way saying that this was true, but with such little information available, people investigating this have to come up with certain things that seem plausible. If Lenny and this mystery man were in fact lovers, then it could be why he didn't go inside for Jared to get a better look at him. Perhaps Jared had seen him before, and if he had gotten a better view, then it could have led to the whole secret unraveling. Jared also stated that the conversation that took place between Lenny and this man didn't seem hostile and actually appeared friendly, almost as if they had known each other. That could also explain why this man knew where Lenny lived. It was simply that Lenny had given him his address, and this whole story of selling a horse was simply that, a story. Using that to cover their tracks and start a new life together. As for me, I lean more into the idea that Lenny Derrickson left willingly and that yes, he hired someone to help him disappear. It just seems the most obvious. With the absence of a body, with no signs of a struggle or foul play, the casual conversation Jared witnessed, the failing business, and the divorce, it all just seems to really push the narrative that Lenny himself wanted to start over. I don't personally believe he and the man were secret lovers, but it could be the case. I feel it was more of a transporter-like situation I mentioned earlier. I have no doubt that those people do exist in real life and help people start over with a new identity. And when I think of the witness statement from the waitress at the diner, where she saw the man doing most of the talking as Lenny just sat there, drinking his coffee and taking it all in, it could be that this man was telling Lenny what was going to happen, where they were going, and who he would become once there. And maybe it was even actually requested by Lenny himself. 
to have one last stop in the place he called home before starting over as someone else. The story of Lenny Derrickson is a mystery that still, to this day, continues to make many in Oklahoma wonder what happened to him. If Lenny was killed, then why? And if he was starting a new life, why would he leave behind his son, who he considered his best friend? It appears that the only two people that know that answer are Lenny himself and the man he was with, which has left many in the state and the true crime world to wonder why, how, and where he could have gone. None so more than Jared, who, on March 14, 1998, saw his father get into that truck and depart from home for the final time.